Okay, I spent the day testing Diablo 4's new feature, the Room Words, so let's talk about it. Now, the first thing we need to do is explain what Room Words actually are and how they work for the people that might not be familiar. So the first thing you need to know is that Room Words are a two pairing effect. It is a generator spender, so you're gonna put a rune in there that generates something called offering, and the other rune is going to take that offering and then spend that offering. Now, when you're spending the offering, it has a variety of different effects that you can do, for instance, reduce your active cooldowns or be able to teleport. And in order to be able to generate that offering, you can choose your own style of either just standing still or moving five meters or evoking the power from another class, or maybe when you become injured, it generates offerings. So there's also a system in place where if you generate more offering than you need, these effects can stack or cast multiple times, et cetera. So it is basically a cause and effect a generator spender, and this all happens automatically. Now, when they first showcased this in the campfire chat, I was actually pretty excited. I thought, hey, maybe this is gonna have some pretty cool combinations that's gonna add some depth to your builds. Maybe there will be builds that you build entirely around this. For instance, maybe we'll do something where I try to move as fast as I can. So I'm generating as much offering as I can from the rune that generates offering from moving distances. And then the proc that I have is some mega dope move that I end up spamming a whole bunch. You know, that's where your brain goes immediately. You think, okay, there's probably gonna be something pretty busted with this. But in practice, this actually ends up becoming something entirely different. Now, I messed around with these and to, for about eight hours, I was playing with these here. And I also leveled the character from one to 60 with my buddy Barricade to see how many runes that we could acquire during the one to 60. And that was about 11 of them. So the 11 that we got were magic ones. So you're not really using too many rune words during the leveling process. So the full testing I did was like, go max out the character at the Omega in game, max out all the masterworks, get all the runes, try out all of the legendary ones, etc. And uh, basically, I'm gonna just cut to it here. This boiled down to there was only a few of these that it felt smart to use literally at all both from the active uh, part of it as well as from the the generating the offering part of it so the combination that i came up with that is the only one that seems to make any sense for at least my character right now as well as when i asked barricade i said hey man when you were testing your room words today which ones did you end up using? He said the exact same thing. And that was, I ended up using the Druid's Petrify, which increases your critical strike damage and also does CC. And this pretty much can be spammed. And then I had the Barbarian's Enhanced Warcry, which gave me movement speed and damage. Now you're gonna notice that both of these are basically just effects that increase my damage. So the reality of what the room words turned into is it went from something that I thought was gonna be this cool build that maybe changes things up. And I'm like doing like a earthquake druid or something. And instead I just found myself doing things that just gave me a little bit more damage. Um, and in order to generate these, it's actually pretty boring too. The one that I have is me standing still in order to generate this. So because I'm just standing still casting my, my core move, it just casts it, you know, every couple of seconds or something, it's gonna cast one of these. And I'm not saying they're bad, like having Petrify on spam is pretty cool. Um, and having the, you know, the, the war cry is pretty cool too, but you don't really feel the impact of it. I'm just getting passive bonus stats. So it's pretty boring is the way I felt about it. I was pretty excited by the room words, but then after I started using them, I got more and more and more bored because all I'm kind of doing is just getting a passive generation of more additional damage. And if I tried using the other ones, like there's one in here somewhere that gives me like plus three to all skills. I definitely didn't feel that one at all. It literally is just giving me plus three to my skills and I have 16 or whatever on landslide right now. So it puts me to 19. Like, I guess that's kind of cool, but it didn't really feel like it mattered at all. I tried using some of them, like for instance, the Spirit Burns Vortex, but the circle of the Vortex is so small that it barely grabbed anybody to pull them in. So that one was kind of disappointing for me. Now, arguably these could solve some like damage reductions issues that you might have here. For instance, you could do like, okay, well I'm generating the Dark Shrouds that only the Rogue gets, and this gives me more damage reduction. Like stat wise, some of these are, you know, they're not so bad. It's not the, it's not the power portion of this that that is a bummer to me. They are actually a decent power upgrade, but they do replace your sockets of your gems. And if you look at these gems, I mean, I get 150 willpower per gem socket. So that's 300 
willpower in here. If you look right now, I have 2270 of my willpower, which gives me skill damage 567. Now watch when I replace these with gems. Okay, I unsocketed them and replaced it. And now I go up to skill damage 745%. And granted, I have, you know, willpower on the necklace here. It's not the greater affix, but I do have a masterwork and it's on the necklace there. But, you know, I mean, that's that's quite a big jump in power. So you're it, it's a little bit pseudo the perception of the bonus damage you're getting isn't entirely accurate because you are having to sacrifice something in order to get the power. I am losing a raw, you know, 600 willpower before I increase it here. Like that, that's a lot of willpower of my primary stat. I find myself very often saying that the game has a good core structure. Like there's a good base of which to work around, but it's always in the, the execution that I find it wanting. This is the same conversation when I was talking to Barricade today. He said the same thing. It has a skeleton is what it feels like in the game. And for me, the room words feel the same way. I like the design of it, the offering that generates automatically, that does something. Maybe it's a little passive for me. I'm not really engaging with the mechanic as much, but you know, so be it. The engagement is within the decisions that I make. But because all of my advocacy and, and my my pressure on banking the build isn't so much on actively using them, but on the decisions I make on which one of the runes I'm going to tend to insert, I would expect some banging options that I would sit there and debate against. But the reality is I'm just gonna take the passives that generate me more additional damage because that's the only one that makes sense. The only real choices I have here, or I can take an evade that turns into teleport, which I guess is kind of cool, sure but it's that over 300 of my primary stat or over something that literally AOE CCs plus gives me bonus critical damage, I'm probably gonna take those ones. So I don't think many people are gonna do anything other than just take the, the Barbarian Shout plus something else that they like. I took Druid's Petrify just because I, I like that one as well. I assume people are gonna use that one because they're, it's one of the only other ones other than the Barbarian Shout that's just gonna give you bonus damage across all classes. And if you're not a Druid like I am, then it's gonna be even better because it's another way of giving uh, you know bonus damage that your class doesn't have. So I think that the skeleton is fine, the way it's designed is fine, but the choices that they give us are, are pretty boring. I was hoping it was going to be everyone has some cool, unique build and it's build defining and build changing, but instead it's basically another glyph that we socket into our, our character slots and most people are gonna end up probably using the same thing. I could be totally wrong, this could be a bad take, but um, from what I've seen, uh, from playing with these, I don't really see a, a reason to use like 90% of these things. I guess I could use the one that makes it where I have stealth and, and unstoppable and, you know, Dodd's chance. I get the I get the rogues ev evade here and I could kind of pair that stealth with, uh, you know, the, the mythic unique that when I come out of stealth that I'm doing damage, but... There, there, it's so far away from like actually being something that I would do a build around. Like there's, there's interactions that can happen, but that doesn't mean that there's interactions that like should happen to make a build good. There's just possibilities that could exist. They're more than likely not that great. Like here's another example. So I can do the, I can do the Sorcerer's Mystical Frost Nova, inflicting freeze and vulnerable on enemies. So maybe that would be kind of cool while leveling, but I didn't get any rare runes at all while leveling. In the end game here, when you're, you know, on the test server blasting through the pits or whatever, uh, I don't really need to have a random vulnerability and freeze. If my build doesn't have a vulnerability already, then it's kind of dog. And if I need the freeze in order to like save me, then the build's kind of dog. And plus it's straight up worse than just using the Petrify, which AOE stuns and give me bonus damage uh, literally anyway. And plus there's tempers like this one that straight up just gives me a chance to freeze by hitting. So I don't really need the freeze anyway when it's just a secondary temper that I happen to have on only one piece of my equipment. Also, the balance of some of these seems a little weird to me. Like this one requires 700 offering, which is a pretty good amount of offering. And it guarantees a crit and overpower, which is cool. So I can get a crit and overpower. Like, you know, if I'm playing a overpower build, like Pulverize or something comes to mind, right? So I get another one of these guaranteed overpowers, which I do like guaranteed overpowers. I think guaranteed overpowers actually feel quite good, but that's 700 offering. So, so to generate that, it, look at this. I would have to get a lucky hit, 
70, I'd have to get 70 of these lucky hits against injured enemies, or I would have to travel, how many meters would that be there? That's 50 meters for 500. We're talking, what, 70, 70 meters in order to actually generate one guaranteed lucky hit. So I'm having to run a marathon to be able to get a guaranteed crit. I don't, I don't really see that the cause and effect are often worth it for some of these. And again, I don't care about giving the guaranteed crit and overpower once every however often when I can just get raw stats to make all of my moves do more damage. Because once again, I'm trading these sockets for raw willpower, which is my primary stat, which gives me skill damage. So in conclusion, I don't hate the design aspect of it. I was excited at the campfire and I still think that the design element of it, of having, you know, the spender generator style can work all right for the passives and, and being able to pick your own runes and sort of, you know, mix and match your own build is good in concept. I just think in the options that are currently available, uh, leave me pretty bored and not wanting to mess around with them all day because there's, I don't really see a world that exists in which I'm pretty much just not going to use Barbarian Shout and probably the Druids Petrify on all characters, probably including the Druid also. So that's about it. That's my take on it. 